guys, it's your boy Alex, and welcome back to the Brave Lionheart channel. More specifically, we are back with some more reaction videos. I know I kind of start off those types of videos with, you know, more specifically and stuff like that. I'll try not to do that as much. I'm going to immediately forget that at some point, but I'll probably try my best to. But anyway, yes, we are back with another reaction video, and... This is one that has actually been recent, uh, well, actually, mostly requested by you guys. Um, it's a certain YouTube channel that I have not reacted to before, but I have actually watched a couple of his videos. So, for today's reaction video, we're taking a look at the Brandon Colt movie reviews. Or, Brandon Tenold. I hope I pronounced that last name right. I, again, I'm not so good with names, and I apologize for that. But anyway, yes, we're taking a look at that. I have actually watched a few of his videos, actually. I've seen a lot of his reviews where he usually he covers kaiju films. Uh, films usually are sentai and sometimes really obscure anime films. And specifically, obscure horror films. Well, today's video has been recently requested and it is a kaiju film. Not a good kaiju film, mind you, but a kaiju film nonetheless. And for today's reaction, we're taking a look at his review of the movie Reptilian. Now, for those of you who have not heard of it, thankfully you have not seen it also. But basically, Reptilian is sort of a Godzilla ripoff film. In fact, there is the poster for the movie is actually a sort of ripoff of the 1989 Godzilla reboot that came out. You all know the one with Matthew Broderick, yeah, all those characters, Matthew Broderick mostly, and it's infamous bad lines and bad CG Zilla, which thankfully that was taken down by the OG Godzilla in Godzilla Final Wars, or in some other cases it would be called Godzilla 2000, or mostly because it came out in the year 2000, but you get the idea. But anyway, we're not going to waste any, we're not going to waste any time, and we're just going to jump straight into the video. All right, we are ready to begin. And also, if you're wondering why I'm wearing a sweatshirt, it's mostly, again, cold out today, even though it's past December and it's the new year. Yeah, it's going to be cold for a while, I think. But anyway, we're not going to let that stop us, and we're just going to get this started. So, without further ado, let's take a look at Brandon's movie cult review. Or I think cult movie review, I think it's called. I might have gotten that wrong. Uh, anyway, let's take a look at his review of Reptilian. So, starting the video in 3, 2, 1, and let's go. Also, I think uh, the movie was originally a remake of a Korean uh, Godzilla ripoff movie from a different name. I, I can't remember. Today's movie is a special request from Patreon supporter SmashGuy96, named after his grandfather, I'm assuming. Anyway, he asked me to review the movie Reptilian. Yep, that's the poster I talked about. Coming for this show, not just because it's a giant monster movie, but because it's a specific type of giant monster movie. Ugh, yikes. Yep. That's right, it's a shitty CGI giant monster movie. Mm-hmm. And those are the best kinds, actually. Not really, though. Oh, I like his title screen, though. Very nice. Reptilian is the title of the 2001 North American release of a 1999 ah! Korean monster movie. I should have known that was the name of it. A remake of a 1967 Korean monster movie called Yon Gary Monster from the Deep. To get you caught up, Yon Gary was kind of a Korean take on Godzilla. Hey! Yep, it's just Don't as worry, cheesy you know as a Godzilla movie. Anyway, the remake was directed by Korean filmmaker Hyung Rae Shim, who also made Dragon Wars, which is famous for being the most expensive. I think I ended up seeing that movie somewhere in a uh, five dollar movie bin. The financials are a little sketchy on that one. Now, like Dragon Wars, Reptilian was supposedly the most expensive Korean movie ever made at that time, and was an attempt to try and appeal to the American market. Things did not work out that way. Maybe that had something to do with the way the movie was marketed. Gee, I wonder what uh, yikes. Here. And that's actually a pretty Not going to lie though, the poster that they had for the 1989 Godzilla remake was honestly cool. And had one of those really cool like 
textured the covers so for the VHS. That there's zero entertainment to be found. <laughs> anyway, the movie begins with some characters busy exploring a sound stage. I don't know what they're. Or actually, it looks like one of those fake laser tag uh, places you go to. One thing you'll quickly notice is that even though this is a Korean production, it was filmed in English and uses mostly American actors. Oh my God, Professor! Professor! We better check that out, sir. Wrong. We are too close to turn back now. Although oh, the boy. kind of makes it seem like English is a second language. Ooh, looks like there's dinosaur bones in this cave. Mm. They even managed to find the elusive mummy saurus. Let's Ugh. see, people in a cave at the beginning of a monster movie? Yeah, I'm sure they'll be fine. Nope! They're all dead! Congratulations, boys. We just struck Nitro. Also, who sat on the reverse button? <laughs> oh, boy. Let it be known that this particular character, they say that he's the main antagonist of the movie, but we all know it's the aliens from the trailer that it showed for this movie. But good lord, the over-the-top acting this guy does in the movie. It's... It's kind of a rare gem that you find when you go mining. It's just, it's so bad you can't help but laugh at it. <laughs> and I think it gets even worse later on in the movie. Hmm, okay, so I'm assuming that guy's gonna be the movie's hero? And sorry, fellas, but casting a guy called Cashman isn't going to Ugh. ensure that your movie's a hit. Uh, meanwhile, in Korean Wing Commander, I don't know, guys. Yep. Isn't a video game adaptation within the actual movie's a little tasteless, isn't it? And I also don't need to see sex tapes from the drug dealers that helped finance this either. I got a big, juicy story for you. Now listen, I got one word for you. Dinosaur. All right, I'm listening. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, there. No, I said dinosaur, dipshit. Pay attention. A photographer mm. sent to a dinosaur dig site led by Dr. Campbell, a.k.a. Laughing Boy from earlier, who I'm assuming is going to use the bones to try and take over Looks the Looks like he's got some something. wrinkles anyway, on him for the some so just how odd reason. Dinosaur. Simply put, 50 times the size of T-Rex. 50? Say 50 times the size of a T-Rex? Are you serious? Or about half the size of Godzilla, but it doesn't sound as impressive when you put it that way. Speaking of which, this movie can't seem to decide if it wants to be- Not gonna lie! Or the Those are some cool bones! No! Steve Rails back and Matilda May were in there! The army better hmm. figure out what sci-fi movie they're in quick. Also, whatever happened to that one old guy from the beginning? Practiced his, uh, serial killer teleporting powers. He has learned well. We shouldn't interfere, Dr. Hughes. You desert our team for two years and suddenly you appear. Wait, so this is supposed to be two years after that opening scene? Okay, would have been nice if the movie told us that. Then again, explaining things isn't really this movie's strong suit. You just can't accept the truth that your assistant, me, was too brilliant even for you. That's right, you, Dr. Hughes, who was a mentor to me, Dr. Campbell, your assistant, me, Dr. Campbell, me. Hughes wants of course. to stop digging up the bones, although personally, I don't know if I trust this guy. Heed my warning or we're all doomed. Oh, the dubbing. What's going on? Yeah, they just exchanged some clunky exposition. That's about it. I'd be more mm, concerned yeah. with the fact that workers at this dig site... And more bad CGI. There we go. Just an electrical mishap. It's fine. No need to worry about the two dead people on site that I'm clearly trying to cover up. Now get back to work. Holly, however, seems a little concerned. Do you realize what's at stake here? If that gets out to the... You know she's got the right idea to try and leave. Something just doesn't seem right. Oh, what? You mean the two people who died on site that your boss isn't reporting? Think about what's important. Fame and fortune or obscurity. Look, there's a much easier way to do this. Just be a smartass on the internet, and then you'll get an audience. I'm glad someone finally made a movie that exposes the seedy underbelly of paleontology. Meanwhile, the military is busy trying to figure out just what the hell the spaceships have to do with anything. We must commence <laughs> I forgot that the aliens were puppets. 
Though, to be fair, they're the only decent effect in this entire movie. Just really cheap looking, but somehow cool puppets. The only cool thing in the entire movie. You know, when they're not in the dark and you can actually see their faces half the time, but eh, still pretty cool. Makes me think that they could have gone all the way and made this a Godzilla ripoff movie. Well, then again, they did, and they could have actually gone all the way and used giant suits or something like that. But I guess it wasn't in the budget. Mm, I don't know if I like the direction they're taking with this new Predator movie. And yeah, uh, sorry about that. I had to go answer a message real quick. Uh, also making sure that the camera is right for this. I've been having that kind of problem lately. But yeah, it's at this point the aliens finally start bringing the dinosaur back to life. About maybe 20 or 30 minutes into the movie. But now that you think about it, we'll just... Nah. And I'll admit, back when this movie came out, the effects were not too bad with the reconstruction of the bones. The dinosaur bones. Who do you think is there? He ends up finding another dead worker and might as well take some pictures. This guy's gonna have to jerk off to something later. These photographs aren't gonna do either of us any good. Regardless <sighs> of whether you cover it up or not. And also, you had to feel really bad for this cameraman guy. Like, considering the fact that, like, he was called on to there to take pictures and this guy just rips the film out so he has to put new film in. Also, I think this is also the only time we ever see this character again. Yeah, I think he was I think it was pretty much shown that he might have been the main character or the hero of the story, but after the dinosaur shows up, he's just basically gone for the rest of the movie. So yeah, his character was basically pointless in this entire film. Not, I think eventually people are going to catch on that all your workers have been killed. Seriously, another guy turns up dead the next morning. Listen, fellas, at this point, just walk off the job. The dental benefits clearly aren't worth it. Whoever wants to leave can leave. <laughs> the unison arm cross. But don't forget that you're all illegals, and I'll report every damn last one of you. Okay, then we'll just tell the police. You sure you don't want to retake that, bud? At your dig site. You really okay. That much leverage We're leaving that take in. No, oh, wait, I forgot logic has no place in this movie, so I guess he does. And at least Holly has the good sense to quit. Now that she's off work, time to go to the bar and get wired on coffee. Dr. Hughes. What? Bar serves coffee? Holly was also hoping to go home with someone a little younger, but I guess he'll do. First, though, he's got to give her some more exposition. I was on a dig in Southeast Asia when I befriended an old man, and he told me about the legend. The legend. The legend of young Gary. Well, it's kind of going with the trend of, like, kaiju films, giving us a big, giant exposition dump. Do I look stupid to you, Doctor? All right, then. Tell me about Campbell. And is there any strange occurrences around the bones? Yeah, some accidents workers killed look everyone knows paleontologist is the world's number one most dangerous profession a few deaths are to be expected hughes tells hmm. holly that the alien hieroglyphics reveal a prophecy that young gary is going to come back to life and the aliens are going to use him to try and destroy the world but if they stop the bones from being dug up that'll prevent this or something like that uh, yeah kind of a problem with that there doctor Considering they already dug up the bones. So that plan is pretty much out of the window. Got any more brilliant ideas, Professor? Or, or I know I keep saying different things, but yeah, still. You just throw that plan out of the window and think of something completely different because that ain't gonna work. Yeah. Not going to work in the slightest. Then again, they're probably going to think, oh no, the bones aren't completely dug up. Eh, I'm used to it. That well, looks like they've almost finished digging up the bones. Now they just need to find a museum big enough to put them in. Unfortunately, the aliens go all Independence Day and blast the dig site, causing young Gary to be brought back to Yep. There it is, ladies and gentlemen, in all its terrible CGI glory. Whoa, did 
I say Independence Day? I meant Mortal Kombat Annihilation. No! It isn't real! See, even the characters aren't buying these effects. It's <laughs> more believable than some of this dialogue. You're my creation! Yeah, no, you didn't. I don't want to take credit for making this. And looks like our villain is dead less than halfway. And away. yeah, I'm so glad the antagonist of the movie is dead, people. He's also, beam young Gary away, or maybe they just forgot to render him. I don't know. On the plus uh, side, though, the army finally has and now the military to show up. In, Doc. But if that thing gets to the city, we're all doomed. The doctor's right. That monster will destroy a city the size of New York like a house of cards. But because we're in Korea, we'll just have to settle for destroying Seoul. All right, I know Koreans <laughs> love the StarCraft games, but this is getting to be a bit much. Because this movie seems intent on being both a giant monster and alien invasion movie, get used to a whole lot of filler scenes of military personnel trying to figure out what to do. Choppers are airborne, sir. Good. War room. They want to fight? They got it. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Everyone knows you can't fight in the war room. Better it's better than having a pie fight in a war room. Down more CGI test footage. Oh, wait, that's just young Gary again. I can't see. Where is it? What do you mean, where is it? It's right in front of you, dummy. And sure, just try threatening him with a handgun. That worked out great for this guy. Well, that didn't go too well. What? You had to deliver that line and still manage to do it with a straight face. Kudos. All right, there's only one way to do give him props for that, I guess. Time to fight shitty CGI with even more shitty CGI. Of course, the only way to know how to do it or something. I don't know. As close as possible to him until he swats you, and if that doesn't work, try shooting the ground in front of him. On the plus side, at least young Gary. Military is way worse than the way than they were in the 1989 Godzilla movie. Every other giant monster movie cliche. Might as well add a kooky government agent to talk to the army. We must do everything in our power to capture these aliens alive. Hey, you must be crazy. We're taking these mothers out. General Mafia boss is right. And I also, trying to, you know, hostile. negotiate with them didn't really work out that well in Independence Day. But he also interrupts this guy while he's getting a hand job in his car. Young Gary begins I'm trying to score here, giant monster. It's called America Town, and you can tell it's America from all the Asian writing everywhere. You know, instead of shooting the Again, monster, the army just this is a Korean reboot that was westernized somehow. Rampage. He spots a busload of American Kennys. Look at the that really shouldn't be a thing you're excited about, kid. Eh, you got lucky, kids. <laughs> and shitty CGI oh, helicopters didn't work against Young Gary. I doubt shitty CGI jets are gonna do anything. I have luck. <laughs> All right, here's another similarity between this movie and Godzilla 98. The army's aim is about the same as in that. <sighs> yep. Unable to stop Just goes to show that the military is not the best option of taking out giant monsters. Or more specifically, giant dinosaur monsters. If in a major metropolitan area, the collateral damage will be significant. Look, I wouldn't worry about collateral damage. The army seems to be doing a pretty good job of that already. Can anything possibly stop young Gary from destroying the city? Or the army from destroying it for him? Oh, that's how they do it. Oh, thank God. The animator took a break for lunch. Dr. Hughes and... And with that, the military broke one of their biggest rules, not letting citizens into the war room. Although, technically, this doesn't look like the war room. This is just basically the same room that they've been standing in while dealing with uh, the giant Yongari monster. W whatever, but, you know. Anyway, we're just going to continue on from that and see what their big plan is now. I think the secret to stopping him lies in this alien poem Dr. Hughes decoded. And this creature also, to clean my glasses real quick, so... ...will be destroyed by his own intelligence. What intelligence? Well, there wasn't any involved in making this movie, that's for sure. So they find out the aliens are controlling young Gary through a diamond on his head so that they can be reborn after he destroys the Earth? 
or something like that. Before they can tell the army that, though, they try dropping some special forces in over the city, which means that this weirdly predicted the 2014 hmm. Godzilla movie. And if you thought the effects of the movie been impressive so far, just wait till you get a load of this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, time for some behind-the-scenes info. After the movie's original release in 1999, the filmmakers decided to upgrade the movie by adding some new scenes, as well as going back and improving the special effects. Now you're probably thinking, well, clearly I picked the old version since that would be easier to make fun of. Hmm. Nope. This is the improved version. That's <laughs> right. This is what the movie looked like after they went back and upgraded the effects. What the hell did Young Gary look like before? Was he just an unfinished wireframe animation going around smashing shit up? What's even harder to believe is that this supposedly costs 13 and a half million. Dang, million, really? Which for comparison is only slightly less than what X wow. cost. In fact, if you adjust for inflation, it actually costs a little bit more. All right, well... Sure hope the craft services on this movie were good. Compared to this guy, <laughs> Godzilla is a pussy. No. Hey, whoa, 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 no, 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 no. Pussy. You don't get to call Godzilla that. Oh, young Gary's a lame ass monster. Holly and Hughes tell the army to try and hit the diamond on young Gary's head. Remember, fellas, if he starts flashing red, that's how you'll know it's hurting him. Unfortunately for them, their aim still sucks. They better try and stop young Gary before he destroys America Town. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure he's fine. Yeah, I'm sure he's fine. Uh, what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> we both called it. Manages to kamikaze the diamond, which doesn't do anything apparently. Missiles away. Can really kill him, I guess. Okay, guys, just stop. You're only helping Young Gary destroy the city faster. Wait a second. What the hell's going on here? Young Gary just saved those people. He's on our side, General. <sighs> yeah. That still doesn't make sense to me. Okay. Whoever the writer was for this movie, you should have gone back and done a rewrite because that's... That's just stupid. Again, trying to make this like a Godzilla ripoff... You're just failing at it. You're failing at it. Badly. Okay, fine. You would think with Young Gary no longer a threat, the movie would be over, but there's still 15 minutes left, so I guess they oh, got to fill it with 15 minutes, something. really? The aliens send down another monster. To they, just had a, a, they just had another monster with them? Looks like they can just destroy it themselves with their spaceship. Well, maybe this new monster will look a little bit better. Nope. It looks way worse. Nope. Here's another fun fact about this movie's production. Originally, the monsters were going to be... Oh, they were going to make this practical! But partway through, they decided... They Why didn't the they? CGI. Again, now that I think about it, they probably didn't have enough money in the budget to film all this with practical suits. Hey, at least we got to see a picture of what they look like in the practical suits, and they're not bad. Just kind of wish they had them into the movie. But we, we only can wish for it, and it sadly will never happen. Because, yeah, definitely a sequel to this movie will never happen either. The monster looked like a real guy in a costume. Speaking of which, unlike Ape, there's no rape scenes in this Ooh. movie. But it does have something else. Well, I mean, that's practical right there. Ah, uh, no, not the tentacles. Run, young Gary. Get up, young Gary. Fight, man, fight. Telling young Gary to get good is not helping. All right, so is the monster dead now? Yeah, he's not dead. It's like a headless chicken. Or specifically, a headless alien chicken. And more tentacles! All right, at this point, this movie's starting to get a little far-fetched. Thankfully, even young Gary's getting a little tired of this shit and decides to just blow it the fuck up. 
Yay! Happy ending! Yeah, I guess. Few minutes left. With their monster defeated, the aliens have no choice but to leave the Giver unit on Earth. Or something. By the way, I would make fun of these aliens more, but they're <sighs> easily the best effects in this movie. The entire world appreciates everything that you've done. Thank you, General. But young Gary should be given the credit. He's the one that turned it around. Saved us all. He also killed thousands of people before that, so... Eh. So with the mm. aliens defeated, the army gives young Gary a helicopter ride, and Dr. Hughes... Where he'll join not Godzilla, I assume. The end. I mentioned at the beginning that Reptilian was made in order to try and appeal to the American market, although considering this 2001 DVD seems to be the only release it ever got in North America, <sighs> I don't think it really succeeded there. And what little reviews it got were mostly negative. So, is this movie as bad as its reputation? I'd like you to meet my little friend! Yep. Yeah, but the real question is, is it entertaining? Well, it's a bit of a mixed bag there. Even though it's only an hour and 40 minutes long, it's still good, but it could have been shorter, with lots of repetitive scenes of military guys looking at screens, and it also never really gets balls out crazy enough to make it a true cult film. But there is still enough corny acting, bad effects, and incoherent plot lines to make it worth a watch with some friends. And hey, out of all the Korean movies I've done on this show, at least it didn't have this in it. Oh, I remember that video. Ugh. Well, it's all for now. Until next time. Mm -hmm. All right, there you have it, guys. That was my reaction to Brandon's cult movie reviews. Hopefully I said the title right. And yeah, there were some funny bits that he had going on with this whole review. He definitely is funny. I will admit that. He is he is definitely funny. Uh, fun to watch. From what I've seen from his other videos, he gets a lot funnier. And he does know a lot about more obscure movies that most people don't know about. And believe me, there's a ton that a lot of people don't know about. Which, by the way, if you guys want me to react to certain ones, uh, let me know in the comment section down below. And... Possibly I'll do more uh, Brandon Colt movie review uh, reactions. I'll try my best to do it. Uh, anyway, with that being said, thank you all for watching this video. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and click the notification bell to never miss a new video. Anyways, I will see all you awesome guys and gals later. Bye-bye!